Hey, you guys, welcome back to a touch by candy, a candy's touch. Hey, so last a couple of weeks ago, we did something called what are you connected to me and Dr. Nixon and shout out to Dr. Nixon, because we were supposed to do that video like a week prior to the recording on Sunday. And I wasn't I had these headaches and stuff, you guys, I just couldn't do it. And she was ready. So I had to catch her while she was at a convention and she had a rush back and I'm coming from church. So it, we didn't really get to connect or anything. And it was kind of like, we were on two different things about how God can operate. Cause there's so many ways that you just can't put God in the box. So, you know what? I was like, Dr. Nixon, we do not have to drop that video. And she was humble enough for the body of Christ to can't you drop it? Somebody needs to hear it. And so I didn't drop it, but Wednesday came, I said, you know what? Drop it. So this is a part two to what are you connected to? the power of connection. And this one is gonna um, specialize in generational covenants. What, can we what you can have a strong, how you can have a stronghold and not knowing it through grandpa or mama from down the line. So I am gonna to try to keep these videos real short, you guys, but when it's something very informative and powerful, maybe an hour or less, um, I'm gonna to try to keep it short though. But so I'm giving you guys a time so you guys can choose and pick what you want. So I'm gonna go down this time list. So the first video is gonna be the foundation how these general covenants can come about. Um, that's gonna be four minutes and 42 seconds. You need to listen to. Second video is gonna be two minutes and 30 seconds. How someone discovered what was one of their generation generational covenants. You know how people pay for their DNA, their bloodline, where they came from in their family history? They found out a little bit more than they expected. So, and you guys, you don't have to pay for stuff like that if you don't want to, because the Holy Spirit, God can, you can go to God and God can tell you everything. So you can make sure you play it safe for the things that were secret that you wasn't not aware of. Next, we have this testimony. That's going to be 24 minutes and 56 seconds seconds pay attention to that testimony he's gonna be using little pictures and visions make sure you watch it so you can connect it to the fourth video it's a famous celebrity okay they like did this recording well at least what, what i'm aware of like several years ago and somehow today this morning all this came about today you guys and so i'm like let me take care of this real quick because i got some stuff to do tomorrow with my group and so forth so i'm not going to be able to drop this so i'm doing it tonight and tomorrow when my pastor does his sermon i'll just add it to the link um moving forward i should add his generational sermon because he did the one on generational sermon i could add that and then his and that one I'll do the generational sermon tonight and then his new one tomorrow. I'll add it, you guys. Okay, so moving forward. Okay, so make sure you pay attention to that famous celebrity using the metaphors and some of the stuff that this person said they, is, they went through. And you guys come up to your own judgment. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Okay, and the next video is scriptures, five minutes and 20 seconds. So you can go from, pop, pop, pop. this is a person who used to be involved in this thing. And so they can let you know, this is why it's wrong, scripture. And they line it up, okay? So you don't even have to do your research if you don't want to. And then the sixth video is the history and expertise. Like you see how we had Dr. Kayla last a couple of weeks ago? This is an expert who did their research. And so they came up with some names and some, um, um, countries where these things came from. They kind of went back to back in Adam days. I don't know if it was one of his sons because the one who was disobedient, I don't know if it was him, but it was back in that day they was able to trace it to. So that was pretty interesting, you guys. So if you don't, um, that history one, it's going to be about, I don't know if I said the scripture one. The scripture one is five minutes and 20 seconds. Um, and then the history one is about 20 minutes. I'm trying to narrow it down because I'm freestyling. So I'm going to hit pause. You're going to see me hitting pause because I'm just adding a freestyle right now. You got to know how I do. Um, butterfly. So the history, I'm trying to sum it up less than 20 minutes. If I can't, you guys skip it. But it's confirming some of the stuff, most of the, everything he said. It just adds more um, um, stuff behind it. And then the next one is five minutes and 25 seconds. The next video, how to examine yourself to make sure you get fully disconnected from these generational covenants that you may not been aware of, or you did the covenant yourself and you didn't have your full knowledge. And maybe you did. And this video is gonna deliver you, okay? So this is gonna help you examine with the word of God to have that stuff, you know, removed from you. And if you're walking, you know, everyday life, making sure you don't get no attacks and stuff and so forth 
added to you. So you want to make sure you're on that straight walk. And then last but not least, we have a 49 second video. I think it's very powerful. I think you guys should really watch it. Okay. So, and you guys share this video for people who you think that may be connected to this unwillingly and knowingly connected. And that last 49 second um, video is going to hold them accountable. If they say, mm -mm, I don't care, I'm going to stay in it. Because God, God said, there's an angel in heaven writing everything down. So God's like, nope, I use one of my children to inform you and you decided not to take heed. So share this, you guys, like, subscribe, comment below on YouTube so everybody can be a part of it on your thoughts on this. Um, there's something called the Blue Lounge in, 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 in this um, testimony and scenario. It's called Blue Lounge. And I was kind of connecting it because this famous celebrity loves the name blue and they talk about the light and they talk about blue and then the blue loud and I'm like is that a connection and because I was thinking like the hottest level of fire is blue hmm hell fire blue I don't know you guys you guys come up to, with your own thing and also this week this weekend coming up oh sorry we're still on Saturday next week are this Next week, during the week, or the next weekend, or the weekend after, however I'm led to do it, I am going to do another quick video on how, maybe like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, of how you can still have spiritual warfare, and you may not have been disobedient. I don't want everybody judging you like, you must have did something wrong. What did you do? That doesn't mean anything. The devil came and attacked Jesus in the wilderness. when he After he finished his 40-day fast, this thing about how vulnerable he was. And right before it, it was like Jesus was hungry. So it said a fleshly need that he was going through. And that's God. And the devil came for him. Not a demon, not a personality demon, but our marine demon. But the devil himself came to Jesus. So just because you're going through spiritual warfare does not mean that you did something, okay? The devil could see light. He's darkness. He knows what light looked like. He used to be in heaven. He's a fallen angel. And other fallen angels came with him. He was an archangel. He had more power than them. So that's why they're under him. So there's levels to these things. Just like God has levels, he mimics everything God does. So listen to these testimonies because he's mimicking stuff and go to the word of God. So when you know something don't sound right, believe the word of God. You don't need to add no other stuff and take anything away. The word of God has everything you need. Don't be, miss, do not be taken off you guys from your from where God's taking you from people easing you away from the Bible slowly but surely okay they just have this magic extra resource their resource better support the Bible and fulfill the Bible like Jesus said I didn't come to change the law I came to fulfill it they got a there's a lot of people out there with a whole new story that God ain't got nothing to do with okay they don't change Genesis and everything else but anyways moving forward you guys um because yes, because I spoke about that spiritual warfare that I was in a couple of months ago. That was attack from the devil. I don't wrestle with uh, demons and principalities. I've never been able to go that long, like over a month and months, like not being able to say God's name or get on my knees or read my Bible. Like it was like me physically getting dragged and beat up like my spirit. So that means my spirit, that means my emotions under attack. My mind is under attack. Like even when I got a little breath, I still didn't have the sound mind to call on the Lord or this and that when I got a breath. It's like, it was like, I can't explain it, okay? But um, thank you, thank God I had something in the bank, okay? It's prayers I stored up because I was a consistent prayer and reading Bibles. I had written word in my heart, okay? So I had that faith to activate even when I couldn't speak. My mind had a thought of, God help me, I know you coming soon. So that's why you got to repent for your thoughts too, you guys, because God can hear those. And I, I just thank him for giving me out of, out of the, that situation. So I have to share my testimony, right? All right, love you guys. I'm gonna be hitting pause because I'm trying to make this thing fast, but it may be an hour, but I love you guys. Um, take heed to the word of God. And I wish you guys the best. Um, praying for you and pray for me. Bye. I wanna tell you a few things about inheritance. The word hereditary can be defined as genetically transmitted or transmittable from parent to offspring. This means that a disease or illness can be passed down from parent to child, but it doesn't stop there. A characteristic can be hereditary. 
Have you ever heard someone say, he's an angry young man just like his father? Or she has a beautiful voice just like her mother? So you can inherit a disease. You can inherit certain characteristics and physical features. Now, what's also interesting is that you can inherit a feud. How many young adults have feuds because of an issue that had to do with their parents? How many gangs are at war over a feud that was started by their parents and grandparents? In this life, you can literally inherit enemies. Should someone have a strong dislike for your parents, they'll most likely have a strong dislike for you too, despite you never having said a word to them. So here's the thing. If you can inherit something biologically, if you can inherit something in your personality, if you can inherit something financially, don't you think you can inherit something spiritually? 2 Kings chapter 10, verse 30 says, And the Lord said to Jehu, Because you have done well in carrying out what is right in my eyes, I have done to the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart. Your sons of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. Jehu did well in the eyes of God, and for that, his children were blessed to sit on the throne for the next four generations. Talk about leaving a spiritual inheritance. And so in this modern day and age, you'll see people who are so oppressed and so overcome by a spirit of depression. But if you look far enough into their family history, you'll notice that someone or multiple people have fought with the same spirit. Or it could be in another area. Perhaps the father had a wandering eye. The uncle has a wandering eye. And now the son finds himself to be fighting the same battle. For the ladies, it could be that there's a history of divorce in your family. Mama was divorced. Nearly every aunt is divorced. And now you're fighting the same battle. So here's the thing. All of us, every person you see has a battle they've inherited. Every single one of us has a spirit that we'll have to contend with at some point. So what do you do when you inadvertently inherit a problem? You're not drawn to drugs. You're not drawn to crime. You're not drawn to alcohol. But for some reason, you find that you're caught up with lust. What do you do? What do you do if you find that you can say no to sexual immorality, you can say no to adultery, but you cannot control your temper? Here's what you do. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 in the Amplified Translation says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage, true freedom. You and I need the Spirit of the Lord. We need his spirit in order to break any links to the past. Every evil inheritance that is passed down in our bloodline can be broken by the spirit of God. Every evil characteristic, an evil spirit that follows your lineage can be broken by the spirit of God. The Bible says in Galatians 5 verse 1, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Jesus has indeed set us free. And so you and I should be encouraged to stand firm and refuse to bow down to anything that is not of God or from God. The word of God teaches us not to be overcome with evil, but instead... They were able to go back and find my great, great grandmother, Mary Molly Shaw. She was born into slavery. She lived through emancipation. So amazing. And then they were able to find my great, great grandfather, Charles Shaw, 
he was an African-American Freemason, just telling my children that these are your great, great, great grandparents. There's no words to describe how amazing that felt. And also, Masonic, right? Masonic. Yeah, I, I, well, my career in law enforcement, I actually joined the Brotherhood of Freemasons. Uh, okay. Yeah, how'd you get into that? How'd you get into that? Man, you know, a lot of cops are involved with that. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it is, it's uh, it's a thing that I'm not saying you must do, but 95% of them do. You know what I mean? Now, uh, what's the benefit out of it? Like, what what's what's the main purpose? Of actually, 95? for me, if you're going to ask me the question, I think it was more like biblical history. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, what intrigued me the most was they, you know, they talked about King Solomon's temple and mm -hmm. the Holy of Holies, and I've always been intrigued by it. So this actually exists? Yes, it does. It's the occult. There's nothing to be messing with. Okay. I'm going to tell you straight up. All right. Uh, and there's three phases. Uh, first shift, I mean, the first phase is the inner apprentice. Okay. Uh, even before you get to that phase, uh, you got to be uh, pretty much uh, spoke about. Okay. You know, to be one, you have to ask one. So uh, one of my uh, supervisors, he was a lieutenant, um, pretty much came up to me and asked me, hey, you want to join a club? And I'm like, what kind of club is it? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Well, it's a Freemasons. I did my background, you know, uh, on them and did my research. And I've seen a lot of positive things, that, you know, that came out um, out of doing the research. You know, a lot of them donate money to cancer victims and children's with cancer and mm -hmm. you know, Shriners, they have their own hospital and and so forth, you know, and, you know, I was in a position where I'm working with juvenile offenders. Well, why not? Why not do something in the outside? You know right. what I mean? So uh, my lieutenant spoke for me and two other of my uh, fellow brothers in blue and uh, they petitioned, we petitioned for uh, a spot in the brotherhood and uh, filled out applications and um, they did a background. They do a background on you, see if you're good standing, or else they won't take you. Wow. Uh, they what they do is they take men to make them better. That's what they say. Mm -hmm. But only God could do that. Right. You know, no club could do that for you. That's right. You know, so uh, right around 2006, I'm on my fourth year. I'm a fourth or fifth year on a job. You know, I petitioned. It all went pretty good, and you know, they do a house interview. Okay. So I had. I mean, like 20, 30 people come to my house and uh, they spoke to my wife because they speak to the females first. Wow. I don't know why, but they usually do that because you're going to be, you're not going to be around as much uh, when you, you know, go into meetings or you got to do, um, you know, like uh, take time off to do, um, you know, work uh, as far as uh, donating, you know, get money for donations and, you know, and so forth. So, um, I didn't see that quite a bit, you know, as far as going out there, um, you know, uh, doing any that type of work first, because you have to go through rituals first. Mm -hmm. the The first phase is the inner apprentice phase. That's phase right. one, and you know, you do your rituals. They take you in, and they tie a toe to your ankle. You know, made of tie a, a toe, a toe, yeah, ankle toe. They call it the ankle toe, and it's made out of. Um, what do you call it? Um, it's like a harness. It's okay. like a like a tie. They, they tie it around um, your leg and they raise your pants leg up and uh, you know you're there in a suit and then you go around and you know you're blindfolded so you can't really see the actual temple. Hmm. It's a temple. Uh, you know you got Joaquin and Boaz on one side. You know the two towers, uh, which is the two pillars. Or so the Freemasons. This is, this is like big time. Oh, it's a ritual. This is, this is like it, sacred stuff. Like. Yeah, yeah. But but see, the way they sh they cookie cut it is that uh, they only get the ones that are like, you know, I would say the ones that are really interested and the ones that are clean cut. Right. All right. Um, and I'm going to add the devil to this, too. Okay. Because when you're in the world, you're of the devil, your father the devil, right? Right, right. Uh, when you don't have God on your mind at all times, from when you wake up in the morning to when you go to sleep at night, you're of your father the devil. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to say it like that, but I'm going to be bold and honest, you know? Right. Uh, I was in the right state of mind then, you know, I had some marital problems. So I felt like this, this was an outlet for me to get out mm -hmm. and have uh, fellowship with other brothers. Uh, yeah, right, because you wasn't getting yeah. that with the churches. I wasn't getting that with the churches back home because, I mean, they were 
uh, preaching prosperity. Right. Okay. You know, give me a dollar, God gives you a thousand. And God doesn't work that way, right. man. You got to work for, you know, you got to work to eat. So, yeah. nah, don't wait for a handout. So how long did the first phase last? Uh, the first, see, what they do is they bring you into the temple mm -hmm. and they have the secretary, which is a male. We're all males. Mm -hmm. There's no female masons here. I know in Europe, I think they do, not here. Unless you're an Eastern star, that's different. Okay. But the Freemasons, the blue, you got the blue lodge, which is composed of all different nationalities and and, and backgrounds of, of of Masons, right? To include different religious sets, Hindu, Muslim, whatever. You could be atheist; they don't care. You could be satan. You could be a devil worshiper. Wow. And they'll bring a devil worshiping Bible right there, satanic Bible, so you could wow. you take the oath. there. Yeah, they don't care. See, I didn't know that mm. until I started doing more homework on it. Uh, what did I get myself into? But did you ever get that far? Oh yeah, I became a master mason. Okay. I mean, the, far, the the highest you go is thirty third. But okay. even at thirty second, the, the, see from the ranks of thirtieth to thirty three, which is three, uh, that's when they divulge the, the the actual truth to you. I got you. You know, which they have you in darkness all those years, and then once you start climbing up the the you know the rituals and the faces, and mm -hmm. you go up the the ranks. Or degrees, right? Call it. Uh, you could go from the third degree to the 32nd degree in a weekend. <clears throat> wow, oh, yeah, you could do it in two days. They call that the fast track, but usually to get that high, it takes years. Wow. It, take, it takes years, but you could do it the other way. You gotta pay some money or talk to whoever. I've heard that some people, are, if I, I might have might be mistaken, but I know. I know some of these rich people, these Hollywood people, they give land millions of dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah. It all depends because those are called dues, right? Okay. And you, you're talking about occultic, satanic uh, individuals that work in Hollywood, uh, you know, of, of, of you know, reverence, mm -hmm. of money, of people of power. You know, um, I didn't know all that. Because when you got scales in your eyes, you can only see so much. Right. But when God removes those blinds off your eyes, you start seeing who's who for what they are. Wow. You know, uh, and not every every Masonic lodge. I mean, we all they all talk about the same, but everybody's different. Right. You know, because in order for you to be a shriner, you got to be a Mason. For do you be a Knights nice Templar, you got to be a Mason. And you, the the more you go up in that pyramid, and the highest you could go is a rough child. Right. They're the highs of the highs. Really? Yeah, they're the satanic children of Satan. Wow. They actually sit on the table and they have a special chair for Satan right there. And he comes and talks to these family members and they're the ones that, the, the shaking and bakers, I call it. Now, this all has to do also with the, uh, those people who go out into the wood and they burn that wood and owl and stuff like that? Oh, yeah. You're talking about uh, those, uh, the Illuminati. Illuminati, okay. So right. This that has to do with oh yeah, you have to be a Freemason to be there. All the presidents were Freemasons. Okay. A small portion weren't, but they were Jesuits. This is the same thing. Okay. They're, even the Pope. They don't right. and they don't, I'm gonna be honest, they, they don't actually have to do the whole ritual, they have to watch. Right. And because of their power and rank within the church. But they're still controlled by they, oh yeah, it's, everything is controlled by the white and black pope. Yeah. So black and white, which is oh, white and black tiles, is where oh, we have our temple. That's where you get that. Yeah, okay. the yin yang, you know, the, the right. good versus evil. You got to have one of the balance, ah, and that's okay. the work of the devil. God doesn't work that way. He right. doesn't manifest that way. That's all the trick of the devil. You know, the world, the, the devil knows the Bible better than me and you put together right. because he was there when God was putting it together, mm -hmm. and of yeah. course he fell course but he knows yeah he could twist the word of god and make his soul clean like honey in your mouth and wow. say well this guy is a man of god but no you got to keep you got to go beyond that honey right you got to go around it and do your research mm. because they, they're going to give themselves up you know what i mean a lot of these guys and women men and women that work in hollywood they're all satanists I bet. all of them are satanists and you know what anybody could tell me different I, I really don't care because i know certain hand signs that you do, you know, the pyramid, the rock, you know, Jay-Z calls this the rock is a pyramid. Right. All right. But in that pyramid, there's 13. Right. You also got the, yeah. uh, what was this? The, uh... Well, that, that's the, the horns of the devil. Right. The devil's horns. Yeah. And, you know, that's Illuminati. You, you could use it mm -hmm. for the, the Shriners use it too. Right. That's the Moloch. Okay. Moloch is the actual owl that they worship out in California. All these big shots, big corporations, they mm -hmm. go there. And that's where they make the presidents, too. 
Really? They make presidents there. They know which president they're gonna make. They make them. They, all this po political stuff, right. that's just BS. That's bullshit. Why? That is bullshit. That, that, that is the most deceiving uh, thing in America. They know which, the Rothschilds makes the presidents. They're trillionaires. They own the world. They own, they own like 90% of the world. Yeah, and plus, you, you have all these superstars and all these You actors. control their puppets. Well, and not only that, they got the money to buy land. Oh, yeah. And eventually, it's going to be one government. Yes. Or one secret government, should I say, the like uh, the Illuminati or the Masons. Right. Who will control all this land? But see, the the Masons are the foot soldiers of the Illuminati. You understand right. the pyramid, right? Yes, yes. It's shaped like a like a triangle, right? So we're at the very bottom. At the very bottom. And then above that, you got different families. You know, different. Uh, above that, you got York Rite, uh, Scottish Rites, mm -hmm. which are also sets of different branches of, of Freemasons. And then you go into Knights Templar, and and you got a. Uh, you know, so Shriners. I guess that's where you get the all seeing eye from. Uh, the all seeing eye is the Lucifer. Right. Underneath them is the Rothschilds. Underneath them is the Council of 13. Or the wow. Council of 33. Or 13. Not 13. Underneath them, you got the Council of 33. Underneath them, you got big, you know, different corporations like the CFR. Wow. The Council of Foreign Relations. And underneath them, you got you know, like six big companies that own all the, you know, all, they own all the real estate and they own all like media outfits, you know, like, uh, uh, I said media, um, they own all different types of, yeah, like like those people who are like Warren Buffett and owns Well, people. yeah, he's a 33rd. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so they own, uh, you know, property, they own land, they own Fox, everything. Yeah. everything. So you got six corporations in the world that owns 90% of the assets and the money of the world, right? Mm. So even the Federal Reserve is not of the United States. It's a separate entity that's ran by the Rothschilds. See, the Rothschilds, they run all that from their house. Wow. And they live out in, in England. They don't they don't leave that house. Yeah, I heard something about that. They don't leave the house. Why is that? I mean, is there because that's where the devil dwells. Gotcha. The, dwell, the, the devil can only be in one place. God is everywhere. Yeah. You understand? True. Um, yeah, because God is, uh, he's, he's everlasting. Omnipresent. He's, he's omnipresent. Yeah, he's yeah. everywhere. You, you can't, can't put a, God in there, sir. Yeah, he's too and, big. And you can't have, you can't have the devil no. everywhere. You know, no. he's, he's limited to his power. Hey, you guys, I just wanted to make a quick correction. Um, the devil, God is omnipresent, so he can be everywhere at all times. Um, but the devil, Remember the scripture when God was asking the devil what he was doing? He was always, he said I was going to and fro from, finding somewhere, like, you know, looking for people. He, he just could only be at one place at one time. But he can travel, but he's at one place at one time. So I do want to correct that. Carry on. Spot. Amen. Well, he'll use his foot soldiers to do other things. Exactly. They're all demons. They're all demon possessed. They're vessels. They're fleshly vessels that are... Uh, um, there are compartmentalized, they're, shra they're, they're, they're like shattered. They shatter their brains, and it's just it's like MK Ultra, right? They, they use MK Ultra to um, break the minds of people, mm -hmm. and then they mold them the way that they want them to go. Wow. You know what I mean? Or satanic ritual abuse. That's, that all comes together with uh, the Freemasons. So their ultimate goal is pretty much to have to one, world, one world order, one world religion. One world religion and one world currency. currency. Yep. To eventually rule the world. Rule the world, right. Which is to usher in also the, the Antichrist. Of, the, the Antichrist, Mark of the Beast. And so Mark on. of the Beast, right. So you've seen all this firsthand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, firsthand. I mean, I've seen the rituals. I see where they, they imitate them trying to kill you. Wow. You know, when you get in your masters, they put you like, they, they simulate that they're stabbing you. And they killing you like uh, two volcanoes, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so in other in other words, like you almost have to kind of like the way we have to be reborn. Yes, they're making a mockery out of, de of, mockery. of baptism, right? And, and it's and it's actually reversed. And you know what? The devil works like that because yeah. so if we have to be reborn, they pretty much say you have, you to, have to die yourself. first. You have you to die yourself for the devil. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So just like the you know like the satanic baptism, they do they baptize them in blood and uh, you know like uh, cast iron 
bathtub. Right. If you see the videos that you see, like this girl named um, uh, Rihanna is one of them that she's done uh, blood uh, sacrifices and she's done a blood baptism, but they won't show blood in the bathtub, they show water. But it's symbolic, the water, their water is symbolic to blood. Right. And they have to get in that bathtub. Even Eminem, you see him on on, uh, on one of those magazines, he's just leaning back, bare chested with blood up to his to his stomach. Wow. In a, in, a, in a cast iron, you know, um, bathtub. And that's how they do their rituals. Everything is backwards. Who's the other guy? I know uh, there's a lot of them. A lot of them. Yeah. Uh, it was it Lil Wayne? Lil Wayne is another. That's the most satanic one around. Right, him, yeah. Little Baby, uh, the one that promotes him. He's he's a pedophile. He's a fag. Wow. Oh yeah, they're all homosexuals. They have to be like the Baphomet. Like is the it Baphomet, above? Like yeah. is it below? You see the Baphomet? Yes, yes. He has four arms. Something like well, that. Well, no, no. That that's Hindu. I'm talking about okay. the Baphomet is the 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 god of the Knights Templar. Okay, I'll post a picture as you're saying this. Yeah. It, it, it's a goat's face with horns. Right. It has breast of a woman and the remaining uh, uh, lower half of a man and then the the feet of of a goat wow. you know so they worship that's lucifer all right it's wow. disgusting yeah they eat fecal matter they drink urine i mean it's disgusting i, I never did that you know i never got that high up right. to do nothing like but when you're up there and they expose everything to you at the 30th to the 33 you know it, it's a, you're done you're selling yourself to the devil at that point and then not only that, you're yeah. sworn to secrecy. Yeah, you sworn never to divulge any information, but to always protect and help your fellow brother. That's wow. it. Yeah, yeah. And oh so yeah. That's the, that was the pretty first step. And then what was the, the second? second? Is fellow craft. That's fellow craft. yeah. That's uh, the second degree fellow craft. Okay. Uh, same kind of rituals, but if now you go from raising your pen on a uh, pants, you know, like trousers on the right. Now you're gonna do it on the left, and now you got a different ankle toe with a ball you know man that's crazy and then you blindfold that it take you you know the actual uh, officer they call them officers the ushers i call them ushers they usher you around and you got to bow where you have to bow and you got to you know do what you got to do and wow. and they make you face the the worshipful master of the east the worshipful master of the the west uh this is a specific part in the lodge uh, it's empty and that's the north you never face the north you know, which it resembles where the Lord is at. Right. You know, they said that God is, you know, straight up north, you know, um, but they don't make you do nothing with that. Um, it's just like senseless rituals, you know, and you want your ego to get through, you're eager to get your ring, you know, your token. Yeah. Or, or any other, uh, you know, Masonic memorabilia that you could wear, you put it on. I've your... met somebody when I was working yeah. at, at the shipyard, uh, yeah. someone who did have a ring. Yeah, I used to wear a ring all the time. Okay, so yeah. they give you rings. Then. No, no, you have to buy it. You have to purchase it yourself. Oh. Or if you're my brother and I'm giving you a token of my appreciation to you because you already became a master, right. well, here's a, uh, sometimes they'll give you a dime with a, a compass and square on it. Wow. Okay. You know what I mean? Unless you really put it up close to see it, that's yeah. a token of appreciation and love from your brother. Gotcha. Or they'll probably, you know, well, you know what? We wanted to buy you your first ring. Mm. Or they'll give you a shield to put in your car. You know what I mean? Got so it. everybody sees that your brother, leave you alone. You get special privileges. You know, you get pulled over, have a nice day. Because so, yeah. so the ultimate goal here is that if anybody ever, I guess, approaches somebody, right. stay stay far away from this. Oh, you're going to have to stay far away from them and run. Yeah. Don't stay close. Because, see, the, the problem with that is they use the, the, the actual word brotherhood as an advantage to them. And sad is that catchy? Is that honey? Say brotherhood also. Yeah. Like uh, this is going around a lot in the colleges. Oh yeah, the you know the alpha cadas and yeah. all them. That, that's all Greek. Yes. Um, and a lot of them becomes uh, after a while, they'll become our uh, bones and skulls. Wow. Oh yeah, especially if you're in a Yale. That's where they come from, you know. But they do have that. You have to be a master mason before you become a you know mm -hmm. anything else. Uh, depending on your, you know, your upward mobility, is, and in rituals, the quicker you get them done, the quicker things are revealed to you. But like I said, you could go as high as you want. If you got money, you could buy your way up.
-hmm. you know, honorary. You know how many times they give honorary doctorates that people never ever been in college? Yeah. You know, like, uh, for example, uh, Bill Cosby got an honorary uh, doctorate, right? Mm -hmm. So they jacked him up with some of these women and stuff. They took it away. But he's a Freemason. Uh But see, if, if you start exposing them, They'll go after you, they'll go after your family, they'll try to kill you because the government is part of it. It's not only civilians, the government is in cahoots with these people. Right, right. And in every, there's sectors throughout the whole country that split apart. I I don't know if it's Northeast, South, and West, but they have witches that are in charge of these sectors and warlocks that are in charge of these sectors, and they pretty much monitor the 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 satanic. Um, you know, I'm going to use the satanic, uh, you know, um, members, mm-hmm. you know, like they call congregation too. just like the opposite of being a, uh, uh, a Jesus believer. Right. You know, I don't want to use the word Christian, you know, Christianity. Yeah. Um, but I want to, you know, believers. Right. So they have a specific warlocks and, uh, you know, council 13, which is, which, are either male or female, mm-hmm. and pretty much they're in charge of thousands of members of the congregations and the local witches and warlocks that are in charge of that congregation. Wow. And a lot of them are politicians, heavily involved in witchcraft. Mm. And they have to do certain rituals and certain things in order for them to gain favor with the Rothschilds, and then they send uh, orders of, 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 you know, orders of doing things for, the, for, for that family. Wow. You know, they give them orders, and, and with those orders, come money comes with it. And so, so, like, the exact same way we try to expand the kingdom of God. They're doing it the other way. They're doing it the other way. Oh, yeah, they, they, it's satanic at the core. This whole country is not based upon Christianity. It's satanic mm-hmm. from head to toe. Don't ever think that the president is not a satanic worshiper either. Don't ever think. And I'm going to put it out there, too. I'm going to put it out there. <laughs> nice. I'm going to put it out there. Because, I mean... Come on, their God is money, Lucifer. Right. They don't have none of want or need. Doesn't the Lord says it in the Holy Scriptures, ye that are poor, you're rich. Right? We're rich in favor to the most high. That's right. All you gotta do is ask, and God provides. Uh-huh. If he provides for the little old critters and, and the birds of the air and the fowls of the you know the how air, much more us. how much more us that he loves us even more? Know, We're yeah. made in his creation. Yeah. But these people are satanic at the core. They don't believe in God. They hate mm-hmm. God because their God is Lucifer. Mm-hmm. And I was involved in that. I met witches before. They've revealed themselves because when you're in and you get yourself out, see, what got me out was God's love and grace and mercy. So looking back, yeah, uh, you wouldn't treat nothing in the world for Never. Uh-uh. Right. I'm, a, I, 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 I'm humbled. Amen. To the twentieth power. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, I would never change anything right. because the Most High has something to do with it. Amen. See, and I didn't know. I, I thought it was just things that you know. At times, you know, you do something that you ain't supposed to do. You reap what you sow. Yeah. A lot of it was reaping and sowing. Don't get me wrong, but the bulk of it, the bulk of it was God breaking me down from being a juvenile all the way up to I'm in my 40s now, you know? So I'm a different type of person now. Amen. You know, everything that was taken from me that I thought it was taken away from me, God gave it back Multiply, with interest. Multiply, yeah. So, you know, I, I, at times when I fellowship when with, with other brothers and sisters, you know, I, I, I share with them portions of my testimony or whatever benefits them, you know, in the walk. And they're like, how did you do it? You know, someone once told me, it said, uh, the devil likes to subtract and divide. Yeah. And the Lord likes to add and multiply. Multiply. <laughs> Just like Abraham. Amen, brother. Just like Abraham. That's right. You know, but uh, I mean, people like yourself, you know, through you, I got to see the apostle. All right. Yeah. You know, I would have never got to see Pastor Jennings mm-hmm. if it would have been because of the word of the word made simple, yeah. made simple, you know, on, on YouTube. And then from there, we started fellowshipping. Yeah. And I started watching all his, you know, YouTube channels through you, Tony Harving, right, and, right. and everybody else. And, you know, just before I came here, the Lord spoke to me. He goes, well, you need to be baptized. You need to be holy, brother. 
You got the Holy Spirit in you, you speak in tongues, now it's time for you to be baptized. Amen. That's right. So from here, I'm going to go to the Holy Convocation, hopefully in July. That's right. And I'm going to be baptized there. I got to go see Pastor Dino Jennings to see if uh, Amen. He, he knows what to do with that. Yeah. Well, you see, there you go, guys. You have it. Here's bro Brother uh, Vic. And uh, hopefully he'll be there, God willing. Hopefully I'll be there, God willing. Hopefully yeah. Tony First Hart. Church. Yes, Watch. Amen. And uh, last last week of July. Last week of July. Also, if there's anybody out there considering to becoming uh, a Freemason, don't do it. That's right. Don't do it. If you need to talk to somebody that's been there, oh. you can contact me at 330-707-5159. Or Christ. you can shoot me an email, which is Bless lowercase vr13377 at gmail.com. Uh, at any time, I'm available all day long. Wickedness so I just want to say God bless you. So be safe. Do the right thing. Jesus, Thank you. All right, you guys. Um, thank you so much. Sorry about that. Um, I agree. He, I mean, if you guys got that deep in it and you made that type of covenant, anything outside of God, please um, be led by the Holy Spirit and God. But shoot, you might be corrupted already with so many different demons. But get, I, I, I would recommend um, denouncing whatever you made a covenant with. You have to denounce it. You have to confess it. Just like you do God, you got to denounce it when you have to confess Jesus is your Lord and Savior, and then get baptized again. Go through the whole process again when you're dealing with something that demonic. Um, let's go ahead and get some examples going on. Like hiding in plain sight, the blue color scheme. Blue is a particularly important color to Jay-Z and his wife, Beyonce. After all, they did name their firstborn daughter, Blue Ivy. In 2012, Beyonce shared a passage from the 2005 novel, A Field Guide to Getting Lost, on her Tumblr page, explaining the significance of blue, which says, the world is blue at its edges and in its depths. This blue is the light that got lost. All right, guys, I'm just gonna squeeze through here. Showing the pink up. Can't say anything, because the other videos that focus on this, they got muted out and messed up so guys just watch for your own if you don't see it focus on the main part don't worry about it all right let me let's make it quick all right Criminality. President Blue Ivy? Susan Kalechi Watson's character sits at the head of the table and may very well portray the President of the United States. Jay Z's daughter, Blue Ivy, wearing a similar white feathery gown, is clearly supposed to be the young version of Watson's character. Is Jay Z suggesting that his eldest daughter could have a career in politics? Maybe, maybe not. But we wouldn't put anything past that kiddo. Confessing to Beyonce. Since Family Feud mentions Jay-Z's cheating, it makes perfect sense that Beyonce appears to portray some sort of cleric, donning a tall headdress and long veil while standing behind a church's ornate pulpit. She listened to Jay-Z in a confessional as he confesses his sins. In an interview with... All right. Ying Yang. Y'all can remember that. That's so good to see that. <laughs> Ying Yang in the church. <laughs> I still couldn't be quiet, huh? The ring, obvious, pinky, boo-boo. Meaning of family. Throughout the video, it's clear Jay-Z understands that nothing good can come from family members fighting. But Family Feud proves that it's not only people of the same blood that need to get along. Through various scenes portraying the future of the United States, it's obvious he and DuVernay want Americans to start seeing eye to eye. Otherwise, true progress will never be anything. Freemasonry, Eastern Star, and other similar secret organizations appear to be harmless fellowship gatherings. Many of them appear to promote belief in God. However, upon closer examination, we find that the only belief requirement is not that one must believe in the true and living God, but rather one must believe in the existence of a supreme being, which includes the gods of Islam, Hinduism, or any other world religion. The unbiblical and anti-Christian beliefs and practices of this organization are partially hidden beneath an outward appearance of supposed compatibility with the Christian faith. The following is a comparison of what the Bible says with the official position of Freemasonry. As for salvation from sin, the Bible's view is Jesus became the sinner's sacrifice before God when he shed his blood and died as a propitiation or payment for the sins of all those who would ever believe. 
the Mason's view is, the very process of joining the lodge requires Christians to ignore the exclusivity of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. According to Freemasonry, a person will be saved and go to heaven as a result of his good works and personal self-improvement. As for the view of the Bible, the Bible's view is the supernatural and plenary inspiration of the scriptures, that they are inerrant and that their teachings and authority are absolute, supreme, and final. The Bible is the word of God. The Mason's view is that the Bible is one of several volumes of sacred law, all of which are deemed to be equally important in Freemasonry. The Bible is an important book, only as far as those members who claim to be Christians are concerned, just as the Quran is important to Muslims. The Bible is not considered to be the exclusive word of God, nor is it considered to be God's sole revelation of himself to humankind, but only one of many religious source books. It is a good guide for morality. The Bible is used primarily as a symbol of God's will, which which can also be captured in other sacred texts like the Quran. As for the doctrine of God, the Bible's view is there is only one God. The various names of God refer to the God of Israel and reveal certain attributes of God. To worship other gods or call upon other deities is idolatry. Paul spoke of idolatry as a heinous sin, and John said that idolaters will perish in hell. The Mason's view is that all members must believe in a deity. Different religions, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, all acknowledge the same God, only call him different names. Freemasonry invites people of all faiths, even if they use different names for the nameless one of a hundred names. They are yet praying to the one God and Father of all. As far as the doctrine of Jesus and the Trinity, the Bible's view is Jesus was God in human form. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. While on earth, he was fully human and fully divine. Christians should pray in Jesus' name and proclaim him before others, regardless of offense to non-Christians. The Mason's view is that there is no exclusivity in Jesus Christ or the triune God, who is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Therefore, there is no doctrine of the deity of Jesus Christ. It is deemed to be unmasonic to invoke the name of Jesus when praying or mentioning his name in the lodge. Suggesting that Jesus is the only way to God contradicts the principles of tolerance. The name of Jesus has been omitted from biblical verses that are used in the Masonic rituals. So Jesus is on the same level as other religious leaders. As for human nature and sin, the Bible's view is all humans are born with a sinful nature, are totally depraved, and in need of Savior from sin. The Bible denies that because of the fall, humanity has within itself the capacity for moral perfection. The Mason's view is, through symbols and emblems, Masons teach that man is not sinful, just rude and imperfect by nature. Human beings are able to improve their character and behavior in various ways, including acts of charity, moral living, and voluntary performances of civic duty. Humanity possesses the ability of moving from imperfection towards total perfection. Moral and spiritual perfection lies within men and women. When a Christian takes the oath of Freemasonry, he is swearing to the following doctrines that God has pronounced false and sinful. First, that salvation can be gained by man's good works. Second, that Jesus is just one of many equally revered prophets. Third, that they will remain silent in the lodge and not talk of Christ. Fourth, that they are approaching the lodge in spiritual darkness and ignorance. When the Bible says Christians are already in the light, children of the light, and are indwelt by the light of the world, Jesus Christ. Fifth, by demanding that Christians take the Masonic oath, Masonry leads Christians into blasphemy and taking the name of the Lord in vain. Six, Masonry teaches that its great architect of the universe, whom Masonry believes is the true God of the universe, is representative of all gods in all religions. Seventh, Masonry makes Christians take a universalist approach in their prayers, demanding a generic name be used so as not to offend non-believers who are Masonic brothers. Eighth, by swearing the Masonic oath and participating in the doctrines of the lodge, Christians are perpetuating a false gospel to other lodge members who look only to Masonry's plan of salvation to get to heaven. By their very membership in such a syncretistic type organization, they have severely compromised their witnessing as Christians. And ninth, by taking the Masonic obligation, the Christian is agreeing to allow the pollution of his mind, spirit, and body by those who serve false gods and believe false doctrines. As you can see, Masonry denies and contradicts the clear teachings of Scripture on numerous issues. Masonry also requires people to engage in activities which the Bible condemns. As a result, a Christian should not be a member of any secret society or organization that has any connection with Freemasonry. All right, you guys have his information. They are trying to build the kingdom. I'm so proud of them. Candidate for entered apprentice stands behind the door, waiting to be summoned. He's blindfolded, and there's a noose around his neck with a length of rope trailing behind. His chest is exposed at the left breast, and his left pant leg rolled up. 
The doorkeeper raps three times and announces that the candidate desires to enter and obtain the privileges of Freemasonry. With that, the candidate is escorted into the lodge by the inner guard. The guard holds the tip of a dagger against the candidate's bare chest and asks if he feels anything. Next, the candidate kneels before the head of the lodge, the worshipful master, and they engage in a ritual question and answer. He's led by the rope or cable tow to an altar with a Bible or other holy book. Standing with his heels together to form a square, the candidate now kneels. He places his right hand on the Bible and with his left presses the point of a compass against his chest. He swears to forever conceal and never reveal any of the secret arts, parts, or points of the hidden mysteries of Freemasonry. If he breaks that promise, he binds himself to having my throat cut across, my tongue torn out, my body buried in the sands of the sea at low tide. The assembled brothers rise and give the sign of the entered apprentice, right hand held palm down beneath the chin with the elbows straight out. The master asks the candidate what he seeks. He replies, the light. The master strikes his gavel and the hood is removed. Now the candidate is shown three sacred objects, the holy book, the square, and the compass. The master reminds him that he faces terrible retribution should he ever betray the organization's secrets. Next comes instruction in the secret hand sign or grip and the secret word, boaz. The candidate receives his Masonic badge and the symbolic tools, a gavel and a ruler. The can is a big deal. The new brother has entered the first grade of Freemasonry. Above it are two more, fellow craft and master Mason. Each has its ritual, oath of secrecy, and prescribed horrible punishments. In regular or blue lodge masonry, that's all there is to it. But let's take a closer look at the Brotherhood. Yeah, I'm gonna call it right now. I think I found the single Sorry. biggest productivity hack of 2021. It's this Google Chrome extension called... Arguably the most successful secret society in history. We'll examine how it grew into a worldwide presence and how Freemasonry inspired and influenced many other societies. Many Freemasons object to their order being called a secret society. After all, they don't hide their existence. They openly advertise as evident from the signs outside almost every American town. Instead, Masons prefer to be called a society with secrets. But our definition of secret societies, selective recruitment, promise of special knowledge or status, and oaths of loyalty and secrecy fits Freemasonry perfectly. Remember, it's what goes on inside the organization that's secret. The initiation's repeated demands of secrecy make that abundantly clear. And that raises the question of how I, a not about and the common answer will be fellowship formally freemasonry is a system of morality veiled in allegory and illustrated by symbols consider again the initiation i described a few moments ago the candidate entered the lodge through the western door and proceeded towards the worshipful master at the eastern end that represents the masonic myth that wisdom the light comes from the east, and those in search of it symbolically travel from west to east. The candidate was blindfolded to symbolize his ignorance before the light was received. His breast was exposed to prove he wasn't a woman. His left pant leg was rolled up as evidence that he was able-bodied. 
Of course, a single exposed limb proves little. It's the symbolism that counts. Similarly, the gavel, square, and apron the new mason receives are based on actual stone mason gear. But none of them will be used to do real work. With rare exception, no one in the lodge is actually a mason. They're all just pretending to be. Why? Then there are those terms free and accepted. Free originally meant a man who wasn't a slave or a bond servant, and so who was able to travel from one place to another. Later, it acquired the additional meaning of someone unencumbered by any obligations that might conflict with Masonic ones. An operative mason is someone who actually knows and works in the trade, a real mason. Accepted, also called speculative masons, are men admitted to lodges without any intention of actually laying bricks or stones. They're symbolic masons. The widely accepted belief is that for some inexplicable reason, stone mason guilds began accepting non-working members. Over time, the accepted brethren, mostly wealthy aristocrats or tradesmen, became dominant and the real masons dropped out. The problem with this scenario... The real masons dropped out. Interesting. No one can really say how, when, or why it happened. Why would rich guys want to pretend to be common workmen? And why would guilds admit a bunch of dilettantes? Freemasonry also has been called a course of moral instruction aimed at building character and making better men out of good men, i.e. a course in self-improvement. This sounds similar to the late 18th century Bavarian Illuminati's objective to make men free and happy by making them good. It's even reminiscent of the mystical notion that man is God in the making. Thinking about going solar, but not sure whether it's Sorry, worth it for your home. Well, before you get... That curse According to the American esoteric scholar and 33rd degree Mason, Manley P. Hall, Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity, an outer organization concealing an inner brotherhood of the elect. That certainly sounds a little Illuminati-ish. Hall adds that the visible society is a splendid camaraderie of free and accepted men enjoined to devote themselves to ethical, educational, fraternal, patriotic, and humanitarian concerns. The invisible society is a secret and most august fraternity whose members are dedicated to the service of a mysterious arcanum arcanorum, the secret of secrets. Was that the same secret of secrets that alchemists sought? Yet another Masonic scholar, the 19th century American Albert Pike, pronounced masonry a search for the light that led back to the occult mysteries of the ancient Jewish tradition of Kabbalah. In turn, the Kabbalah connected Freemasonry to Hermeticism, alchemy, and the anti-papal thinkers of the Middle Ages. Did he include among those anti-papal thinkers, the notorious Knights Templar and the heretical Cathars? Pike argued that all divine intelligences, gods, angels, and the like, were divided into two principles of good and evil, light and darkness. To Pike, Freemasonry was the successor or revival of the ancient mystery cults. But he viewed regular Blue Lodge Freemasonry as merely the entrance to the temple. Pike's esoteric ideas weren't intended for ordinary Masons. Most brethren are probably unaware of them. Indeed, and we're just going to be skipping through you guys because I know you guys don't want to be on here long. Some of you probably already dropped, but some people are like, hey, I'm a part of this. What's going on? I'm in a sorority or fraternity. You know what? The mention of the Scottish Rite raises the sticky matter of Masonic higher degrees. No Mason is required to go any further than Freemasonry's three craft or blue degrees, entered apprentice, fellow Ooh, craft, yeah. and master. Higher degrees are bestowed by mm -hmm. so-called rites. They're mostly regarded as purely honorary or ornamental. 
If you imagine the craft degrees as Cub Scout, Boy Scout, and Eagle Scout, then the higher degrees are like merit badges an Eagle Scout earns to distinguish himself. Other terms for the rites and their higher degrees are speculative or esoteric masonry. This is where the mystical and occult doctrines Pike mentions really come into play. Over time, there have been about 20 Masonic rites. The best known are the Scottish rite and the York rite. Others include the Egyptian rites of Memphis and Mizraim. There are or were French, Mexican, and Swedenborgian rites. Among the things they have in common is that they're open only to master, that is, third-degree masons. But the rites aren't under any authority or any grand lodge. Thus, the higher rites can pretty much do and believe whatever they want. The number of additional... The future of health is not of a thing I get a that tracks your heart rate, night and day. It started with the creation of the Grand Lodge of England. This grew out of four existing lodges and steadily expanded in England and abroad. By 1800, more than 300 affiliated lodges existed in England alone. Separate Grand Lodges appeared in Ireland and Scotland. A franchise was born. But in the 1730s, the Grand Lodge was hit with schism. A dispute broke out between factions dubbed the Ancients and the Moderns. At issue was the importance of rituals and associated mystical traditions. The Moderns, influenced by the rationalism of the Enlightenment, wanted to chuck ritualism. The Ancient Purists were determined to preserve it. The underlying question was whether Freemasonry was to be a social i.e. political and philosophical order, or a mystical religious one. The same schism hit a... But the Freemasons received an exemption so long as they maintained records of their members. That says a lot about the prestige and influence they'd attained though it isn't surprising considering that members of the royal family were initiates. Indeed, Freemasonry had become the secret society of choice for the aristocracy and rising middle class. The cost of lodge membership, including the elaborate regalia, kept out the riffraff. If Freemasonry went public in 1717, it certainly didn't start then. Speculative Freemasonry had been slowly evolving for at least 300 years. The 18th century Grand Lodges grew out of older ones, supposedly meeting from time immemorial. For instance, in Scotland, there was the kill-winning Mother Lodge. It claimed to have been around since the 12th century. In York, the independent Grand Lodge of All England traced its origins to 926 and a legendary convention of stonemasons summoned by Anglo-Saxon King Athelstan. The 18th century lodges based their rituals and rules on a collection of documents called the Old Charges, most of which dated to the 15th century. I get so excited when I find a beauty product that is 100% cruelty-free, vegan, and plastic-free, and also... The oldest, the so-called Regius or Hallowell manuscript, may go back to 1390. It mentions the Athelstan legend, but also invokes the Greco-Egyptian mathematician Euclid, who lived around 300 BC. Euclid, the story goes, counterfeited geometry and thereby invented Freemasonry. Of course, how or why oh, Euclid did that, or what counterfeit geometry Which? was, is left a mystery. One of the earliest known Masonic documents is the Cook Manuscript from 1450. It also mentions Euclid, but brings in King Solomon and pushes things all the way back to Adam. 
The Dowlin manuscript from the mid-1500s elaborates the connection to Solomon's temple and its legendary master mason, Hiram Abiff. Abiff's death at the hands of three unworthy apprentices became a centerpiece in Masonic mythology. Clearly, no one had any real idea when and how Freemasonry began. The blank canvas made... Nineteen, they named their youth auxiliary the Demolays in honor of Jacques de Molay, the last Templar Grand Master, who was burned at the stake in 1314. The historian John Robinson argues for a genuine link between Templars and Freemasons in his 1989 book, Born in Blood. Robinson focuses on the 1381 Peasants' Revolt in England. Robinson believes a shadowy great society behind the revolt was a conspiracy hatched by clandestine Templars aimed at revenge against church and crown. Robinson's evidence is intriguing, but ultimately thin. He does raise some interesting points. For instance, while we picture medieval Mason guilds as a kind of trade union, they were really no such thing. Really, they were employer associations run by master masons who treated their lesser brethren as common laborers and indentured servants. Thus, Robinson speculates the crypto Templars didn't take over genuine guilds, but formed their own pseudo Masonic guilds as a cover. That, he argues, explains their obsession with secrecy, something not typical among ordinary masons. Interestingly, the Knights Templar had their own internal sect of Brother Masons, i.e. an internal Masonic guild. Since most of the Templar organizations survived the suppression unscathed, presumably the Brother Masons did as well. There are other examples of political conspiracy disguised as labor association. One is the revolutionary Carbonari, or charcoal burners of early 19th century Italy and France. There were charcoal burner brotherhoods, but the Carbonari, many of them Freemasons, co-opted the name and terminology as a cover for their revolutionary conspiracies. Among other things, it gave you a plausible reason to be meeting in the woods at night. Still, the Freemason-Templar connection remains mostly conjectured. British Freemasonry would go on to become the secret society of the establishment. In England, 300 lodges grew to 1,000 by the 1860s, 2,000 by the 1880s, and 3,000 by the start of the 20th century. Hundreds more sprouted throughout the empire. The poet laureate of British imperialism, Rudyard Kipling, a Mason, popularized the brotherhood in his writing. Look at his The Man Who Would Be King. Yet the estimated 250,000 British Freemasons in 1900 were a small fraction of a population of almost 40 million and downright insignificant in a larger imperial population of 400 million. Of course, membership was heavily concentrated at the upper end of society, men who already enjoyed some wealth and power. <laughs> For some, however, Freemasonry wasn't exclusive. Okay, let's see. Um, I think I just left it. And by the 1860s, 2000 by the 1880s, and 3,000 by the start of the 20th oh, century. I apologize. Sneaky. Or serious enough. One such man was arch imperialist Cecil Rhodes, the guiding hand behind the creation of British South Africa, the De Beers Diamond Cartel, and the Boer War. Rhodes joined a Masonic Lodge in the 1870s because, he said, 
he saw the wealth and power they possess and the influence they hold. But Rhodes became disillusioned with what he referred to as the Lodge's most ridiculous and absurd rites, and thought the order was without an object and without an end. Rhodes' grand idea was to bring the whole uncivilized world under British rule, recover the United States, and make the Anglo-Saxon race one empire. So, along with plotting the British conquest of South Africa's gold and diamonds, Rhodes formed his own secret organization, dubbed the Society of the Elect. Into it, he selectively recruited statesmen, financiers, and industrialists. Part of his scheme, not incidentally, was the Rhodes Scholarship, designed to turn worthy Americans into right-thinking Englishmen. Freemasonry gave Rhodes his starting point, model, and inspiration. Yet while Kipling and Rhodes epitomized Masonic loyalty to the British Empire, not all British Freemasons were so inclined. Remember that house of many rooms. So let's say you have to read an incredibly long email from your boss that you have to finish before the big meeting. The Grand Lodge of England was always picky about who and what it regarded as legitimate. Masonic bodies like the Scottish Rite were branded irregular or clandestine. Irregular Freemasonry tended to attract dissidents, both moral and political. There's no finer example than the occultist Alistair Crowley, who was once branded the wickedest man in the world. The Grand Lodge denied any association with Crowley, even that he was a Freemason at all. But Crowley boasted a bevy of Masonic degrees from French, Mexican, and other lodges. The esoteric organizations Crowley was associated with, like the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and the Ordo Templi Orientis, or OTO, all had Masonic roots. The OTO, for instance, was initially envisioned as a Masonic academy that would unify Masonic rites with mystical orders to create a unified occult Freemasonry. Another clandestine branch was co-Masonry, it initiated men and women alike. The practice originally started in some 18th century French lodges. It resurfaced in 1893 with the founding of the Parisian Lodge La Droite Humaine, or Human Right. Co-Masonry was later hijacked by English occultists connected to the mystical Theosophical Society. Theosophy sought to combine Western and Eastern mysticism into a universal occult doctrine. It would inspire much of what we now call the New Age movement. Along with a thirst for spiritual enlightenment, some theosophists nurtured political ambitions. One of these was the Englishwoman Annie Besant, who was largely responsible for turning co-masonry into an appendage of theosophy. Besant's politics were definitely radical. She was a socialist, a militant proponent of Indian nationalism, and later flirted with communism. Her Freemasonry definitely wasn't the same as Rudyard Kipling's. While politics was officially forbidden within the Lodge, it was practically impossible to keep out. Masonic Lodges, remember, were selective. A single dissenting vote could blackball a candidate. The frequent result was a Lodge full of men sharing more or less common views, and all sworn to secrecy. Connections formed inside the Lodge could take on a different dimension outside of it. Simply put, Masonic Lodges were like petri dishes for political conspiracy. This was most obvious in French Freemasonry and the Continental Lodges it spawned and influenced. Interestingly, even French Freemasonry was of English origin. The first Lodges were set up by British merchants in Dunkirk in 1721. In 1733, a Grand Lodge de France was formed. It too was mostly English speaking and an extension of the London Grand Lodge. 40 years later, however, the French Masons formed a new Grand Lodge, the Grand Orient de France. It was strongly influenced by the radical ideas of the Enlightenment. While English Freemasonry became the mainstay of the social order, the Grand Orient became an incubator of revolutionary sentiments. It passed this radical flavor on to lodges in Italy, Germany, Turkey, and Russia. It's no coincidence that the motto of the Grand Orient 
liberty, equality, and fraternity became one of the mottos of the French Revolution. Nowhere was this radical streak stronger than in the Parisian Nine Sisters Lodge formed in 1776, the same year as the Bavarian Illuminati and the beginning of the American Revolution. American revolutionary Benjamin Franklin was an initiate of the Nine Sisters. So too was his friend and anti-religious French philosopher, Voltaire, and many other men destined to play a part in France's coming upheaval. Fears that Freemasonry nurtured and encouraged dangerous ideas, while exaggerated, weren't baseless. And no one looked on the Freemasons with greater displeasure than the papacy. In 1738, Pope Clement XII issued the first edict against Freemasonry. He said that it had caused the greatest suspicion in the mind of the faithful, and that all prudent and upright men had judged them depraved and perverted. He condemned and prohibited Freemasonry now and forever. As Clement saw it, the Freemasons' obsession with secrecy condemned them. For if they were not doing evil, he reasoned, they would not have so great a hatred of the light. All right, you guys. Let's see. We're going towards the end if you're still sticking around. You to Dr. Brenda Stevenson. Hi, nice to meet you, Dr. Oh, Stevenson. It's so Finn. wonderful to meet you. She is going to educate you on what life would have been like for your great-great-grandpa, Charles Shaw, as a black Freemason in the 1800s. It's going to be fascinating, and I can't wait to hear all about it tomorrow at your Meet the Baby awesome. family reunion. Thank you, thank I'll you. leave you guys to it. Okay. So... What exactly did the Freemasons do? Well, the Freemasons were really important. They're part of a self-help and uplift movement that black people had during the time period. We were not thought of as being equal to other people, and we weren't treated that way. So black people within their communities, within their masonry organizations, began to organize and to help themselves out. So this... Freemasonry is the best-kept secret in the Christian town. Even Freemasons themselves, the large majority, are ignorant of Freemasonic teachings. So when you're approaching a Mason, when you're approaching the issue of Freemasonry, you're going to be dealing with the problem of ignorance. However, once educated, the Freemason is faced with Christ or the Lodge. And I hold that you cannot be a Christian and an informed Mason at the same time without being in some kind of rebellion against Yahweh. Why? First of all, there's some preliminary. By virtue of us being told not to be overcome by evil, that means there is a chance that a person can be consumed and overcome by evil. But do you know what I find to be concerning? I find it extremely concerning that one can be overcome by evil and not even realize it. Try telling a man who's full of pride that they are full of pride. Most of the time, that person will not have any awareness of the fact that they are, in fact, a prideful person. Or perhaps try telling someone who has anger issues that they are consumed by anger and they need to be delivered. It's more likely that that person will become defensive or even angry than for them to accept that they have a problem. So how do we keep an eye on ourselves? How do we ensure we rid ourselves of any destructive characteristics? How do we ensure that we do not be overcome by evil? I believe that we need to assess our character against the standard in God's word. The Amplified Translation for Proverbs 6, verse 12 to 15 says, A worthless person, a wicked man, is one who walks with a perverse, corrupt, vulgar mouth who winks with his eyes in mockery, who shuffles his feet to signal, who points with his fingers to give subversive instruction, who perversely in his heart plots trouble and evil continually, who spreads discord and strife. Therefore, the crushing weight of his disaster will come suddenly upon him. Instantly, he will be broken, and there will be no healing or remedy because he has no heart for God. So here, the Word of God gives us a snapshot of the kind of evil that can so easily creep into our lives if we become complacent. 
So perhaps you may want to assess yourself against these evil traits. Do you walk with a perverse mouth? Do you deceive and point others in the wrong direction? Do you give instruction in order to stir up trouble? Do you plot evil in your heart? Evil can be revenge, bitter or unpleasant thoughts towards someone. The Bible paints a clear picture of what evil looks like so that we can pinpoint it in our lives and deal with it by taking it to the Lord. And for clarity, let me tell you what God regards as evil. Sin. Sin is evil. This is why I believe the church today needs to go back to the fundamentals of the Bible. We need to go back to scripture. We need pastors, men and women of God who will echo the sermons of John the Baptist and simply say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There is a t- We live in a nation that seems to want to turn its back on God, but there's a people who are crying out and saying, I'm not after the blessings, I'm not after the things, I'm after the presence of God. Because when you get God, you get everything else that you need. You can seek out the things, but miss God. But if you 